like clothes? sticks, sticks on your back. Oh wow. Like okay. Hey, what's hi, up, man? I'm actually kind of curious about sticks on your back. Oh, uh, this little like thing that that's like this posture thing that I was given. Oh, to. I need one right now. <clears throat> man, I got it, and someone gave it to me for Christmas, and I was like, okay, I get it. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Oh, Christmas. Yeah, and then, like, I don't get yeah, it. then you got it. Yeah, and you're like, oh wow, I yeah, really like have that. Semi, posture. I really it's like have semi-insulting when you open it, but you're like, no, this is actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Uh, so the Lego Movie too. Uh, I, I feel like the first Lego movie sort of came out of nowhere. It, it, it just became this hit. Out of I nowhere. mean, not to us. And, uh, we knew yeah, it was great. Yeah. Like, we spent two years making it. That's true. And then it came out into the world, and we were like, yeah, everybody, Lego is amazing, That's and it's right. really cool. Well, I was actually going to ask how, how, what the feeling was like on this one going into it compared to going into the first one. Well, higher expectations, higher, right? Yeah, the expe pressure. There's a little more pressure because the expectations are raised. Mm -hmm. the, the, the end of Lego Movie One, if you remember, there's this promise of a second movie that's going to likely between, be between a brother and a sister, and and they're they're playing together. I mean, it's really complicated to make a sequel to a movie like the Lego Movie because the Lego Movie breaks the fourth wall at the end, and mm -hmm. that, that makes it really difficult. You kind of paint yourself into a corner. I remember thinking, what, right, the what, surprise is out. What like, could you how possibly could you do? do? Mm -hmm. But you. You know, luckily Chris and Phil, the writers, uh, are geniuses and they came up with a really great way in. And I feel now the same way I felt during Lego 1, was just really excited for the world to see what we've been working on because it's just, it's, it's awesome. Something I, I really enjoy about this, about, about this one in particular is, is one of the messages is that it's, everything is not awesome all the time. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, oh, life is sometimes not awesome. And I'm wondering why you think that's important for, for kids going to see this movie, why that's something that's important for them to get in their heads at an early age. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think just mindfulness about the world around them and, and actually being able to deal with anxiety and stress, which, right. is, which are natural. Because fires happen. I was gonna say, yeah. That's you know, not awesome. And yeah. things get loud. <laughs> this is really right on right on cue with those sirens. Very stressful. Yeah. Um, yeah. It feels like teaching kids coping strategies for when right. life is not awesome, for when they feel down or disappointed or upset about something. You know, inevitably bad things are gonna happen in our right. lives. That's just that's human. That's being human. Mm -hmm. And so I think. This movie al allows for like the possibility that when that happens, like here's some coping strategies for right. what you can do and how you can look at the world in a in a nice way and also reach out to people and stay connected to people that care about you right. to get your to get you through those times. And a part of growing up is is learning that life can be tough. And we're watching, of course, Finn, the young boy from the first movie. He's growing up a little bit. He's got a little sister who's young, but he's now growing up. And and I think this cautions kids from when they're growing up, they sometimes feel the impulse to isolate themselves so that no one could hurt them, when in fact, that isolation is gonna be far more hurtful than anything, any dealing with you know, someone else. And oftentimes, you know, there's, someone has reached out an olive branch and you, you take it as a, you, you look at it and you think they're gonna hit you with it, and then you go live <laughs> under the dryer for a couple years yeah. and you wonder why you're sad. It's like, no, um, you know, it's better, once you get to that stage, as a kid, where you start to see the truth of the world around you, and there are, yeah, like coping strategies, reaching out, communicating, listening, and being comfortable with who you are.